Welcome, Welcome back, back to Cartoon Universe. My name is Deep Cut, here with the creator of Cartoon Universe, Haley, and joined today by series creator Matt Brawley, as well as the cast of the show. We've got Justin Felbinger as Brig, we've got Bill Farmer as Hop Hop, also known as the voice of Goofy, Amanda Layton as Polly, and Lila Burzens as Miss Croker. To start, why don't we take a moment for everyone to go around and introduce themselves and talk about what they do on the show and where else we might know you from if we haven't been to these earlier live streams we've done together. And why don't we start with Matt? Uh, hey guys, um, I'm Matt Brawley. I'm the creator of the show. Uh, you will know me probably mostly from this show, but I did also work on uh, Gravity Falls, Steven Universe, Big City Greens, a couple of other things. Um, I did a tiny little bit of work on Mitchell's vs. Machines at the very early stages of development. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to talk with everyone today. Now over to Bill Farmer. Well, um, I play Hop Pop, kind of the patriarch frog. I'm getting these older roles now as I'm getting older. For the last 35 years, I've been the voice of uh, Goofy and Pluto, Horse Horse Collar, several others for the Disney Company. Through my years, I've voiced some of Mel Blanc's uh, characters in movie Space Jam, Sylvester, Foghorn, uh, Yosemite Sam, I've done Bugs and Daffy, and a bunch of stuff throughout my 35-year career. Wow, you've done it all. And now over to <laughs> Justin. Hey, everyone. Um, I play Sprig. <laughs> and, um, but some of the other things I've done have been some stuff for Disney Junior. I, some of you may know Miles from Tomorrowland, or I did played Miles on that show. And then um, Lion Guard and Goldie and Bear, a few others, and then some stuff for Cartoon Network and... Uh, and then, of course, a lot of ADR and everything, but uh, by far, Sprig is such an amazing character to play and definitely the most fun of all. So, <laughs> Now over to Amanda. Hey, guys. Um, I play Polly, and uh, I've also played Poppy on uh, Trolls' Netflix and uh, uh, Hulu, you know, series. And uh, let's see here. Um Powerpuff Girls. I played Blossom when we did the reboot of that on Cartoon Network. Um, I've played uh, Rain in um, Final Fantasy and uh, some various on-camera roles also. <laughs> and finally, over to the voice of my favorite character. Sorry, character, <laughs> Lila. A character. That's that. Character. <laughs> character. Hi, I'm Lila Burzens. I'm the voice of Mrs. Kroger. Um, which is one of my favorite roles to date. I love playing sassy old ladies. Uh, most people know me um, as the voice of Xiao in Genshin Impact, uh, Maluki in Hunter x Hunter, and uh, I'm Sophia Falcone in Batman The Long Halloween Part 2. I do a lot of, uh, oh, and uh, Lioness from Thundercats Roar, if you like, like, badass ladies. And then uh, the rest, a whole bunch of smattering of things, mainly games and cartoons and things like that. And I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, all of these voice actors, as well as Matt himself, are signing posters and prints from the show. Uh, you can get yours using the streaming link. Uh, it should be popping up somewhere on the screen now, as well as being in the description down below. Uh, they'll be signing them on their own personal live streams all weekend as well, which you can find on the Streamly page. And especially, uh, there's also the audience Streamly watching today, not just the Cartoon Universe one, because we're simulcasting now. Uh, and now over to Haley with the next question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are largely here today because of the season three finale, which is, of course, also the season uh, series finale. And so spoiler for those who have not seen it, it included a dramatic moment where Anne seemingly died, but was copied by a godlike being before being sent back to the physical realm. And, you know, this is quite an epic moment in cartoon history. So for all of the cast, uh, this question is to you. If you have seen it, because I know I'm not, I guess not everyone's caught up here. Uh, what was your reaction to this moment? And did you find out during the production process or after the episode aired itself? Um, yeah, let's let's start with uh, Justin. Yeah, I mean, um, I, it was funny because I actually was watching it with my granny, um, the the finale, and we were both pretty shocked. I was really shocked. I I, I kind of you know I I knew some of the spoilers and everything, but I. You know, even after you record it, there's still a lot of, like, surprises. So I was pretty shocked. I, I had some questions, and I, I was amazed by how um, how well it was written. And my granny and I both loved it. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, next to Amanda. 
Oh, man. Um, well, I mean, we found out when we recorded the episode and stuff, but um, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely weird watching it in person because you, you never really know what it's going to look like. But I cried. I cried the entire finale. Like, it was just like... I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was amazing. It, it, it was so amazing. It was like heartfelt and it, it was great. <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing a lot of people have been crying. Deep Cut told me he... He did a couple times, I think. So. <laughs> I, I apologize, Deep Cut. I feel like a lot of this is going to be me apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here. That's why we brought you here. Yeah, here, I know. Here's your chance. This is my hazing. Yeah. <laughs> now over this to Bill. This is your punishment. Oh, yeah. When, well, we thought, uh, when I recorded it, um, you know, I read, wow, this is a powerful scene. This is going to bring some tears. And, of course, we record it not seeing the and animatic or sto storyboards or anything. And so you always wonder how it's going to be presented. And when I saw it on television, um, it was presented beautifully and very heartfelt and touching. And it was everything I would want to see on a final episode. And it's nice that there isn't final episode. Yeah, you know, it means, well, I'm out of work, but- uh, You are I, not. <laughs> <laughs> but- uh, no, it had this, just, it needed that. I always hated television series like Gilligan's Island. They just quit it and what happened to them? Where'd they go? Why are they, are they still on the island? You know, this had a nice closure to it and a happy outcome. And I love the 10 years in the future scenes to kind of let the people know what happens. And uh, yeah, I thought it was just beautiful. I really liked it. Have you guys mm -hmm. seen the 80s Dungeons and Dragons cartoon? That's sort of what happened there. The kids never made it back and it got canceled. And I so, love like, that show. I did too. And I that, that hurt me so. Because I did was just you, like... They wrote the finale. They wrote a finale and they voice acted it if you need closure for the record. They did like a table really? read, right? Yeah, I saw it on the... Sorry. Weird, nerd tangents. Sorry. That <laughs> That's funny though that like they didn't get to animate it. I'm just like, ah, oh. <laughs> Man. Yeah, definitely glad it had a proper ending for sure. And uh, so, uh, Lila, you said you haven't seen it yet, right? But no, I, I recorded some Walla for the 10 years in the future uh, scene, <laughs> but uh, and that already was pulling at my heartstrings. So I know when I watch it, I'm going to be a mess. I mean, a lot of the show makes me it, like yeah. laugh and cry. So I know it's going to be great. I'm ready for the spoilers, though. I'm prepared. Yeah, they're <laughs> I prepared here, myself so... emotionally. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, deep cut. Oh, uh Thought it was still anyway. Uh, the next question. Sorry, was, was it um? That's was I supposed to add, continue on? Yes. Yeah. For the map question. question. Oh, okay. Sure. So while we are sure some things are left intentionally vague, fans are dying to know what your thought process was behind the scenes. Uh, what it all means, and perhaps if you're willing, if this and is somehow a continuation of Anne, such as her soul or consciousness being transferred, or if that is, or if that Anne is in whatever sense laid to rest. And if this is just some new version of Anne picking up where she left off, yet still filling all the experiences of that previous version, previous Anne. So for Matt, uh, can you tell us about uh, about Anne's death and cloning, if you have any specifics? Yeah, so with that scene and the way it was written, it's funny because like everything I do comes from like a character point of view or kind of necessity for the story. And for me, it was important to honor her sacrifice and not like undo it completely because that would feel uh, somewhat cheap. Um, and then in addition, I liked the texture it gave to the guardian character of him kind of treating everything like files, you know what I mean? Control C, control V, and just kind of how this being um, works and operates. So it was kind of those two things that drove the decision to write it that way. In as far as like, her soul. And those are some big questions that, you know, um, philosophical questions that the show doesn't have answers for because like those answers don't exist in life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like, you guys know the ship of Theseus, that kind of philosophical exercise where uh, it's about a ship that if you change its parts over time to the point where every part has been replaced, is it the same ship? Oh, um, it's yeah. it's kind of like that where it's like, well, that's a question for you. You know what I mean? Like, that's more of a philosophical question than uh, something I would have a hard answer for. Thank you so much for, I mean, that, I, I know a lot of fans are probably 
they want those hard answers, but thank you so much for clarifying what you could. Uh, I think the fun of those scenes are that they are, you know, for us to kind of figure out and put the meaning into. Uh, the climactic moment was pretty intense for a lot of viewers, both old and young. So let's steer the next question to something a bit more fun. This one's for the cast and Matt. Are there any running gags behind the scenes, either in the recording booth or with the production team or even among your own friends who know what you do? And why don't we start with Lila? <laughs> Just random songs about nothingness whenever I'm Mrs. Croker. And one time I was in there, I was like, I like oatmeal, especially when it's cold. I like oatmeal, especially when it falls in my shoes. Just randomness. Whenever she gets to hum, I have some some random song that she comes up with. But but I don't know. I, we're just always joking around in the booth anyway. <laughs> and now over to Amanda. I agree. I think it's just the endless jokes. Like when you're in there, you're just like always having a good time. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, the writers I, are amazing, right? Yeah. I feel like I'm always screaming and falling from something or <laughs> off of something, which is always fun. <laughs> a lot of yelling. Yes, a lot of yelling. <laughs> now over to Justin. Yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree. It, it's so much fun to, especially with, you know, Sprig and Polly, and they, they, they have to do a lot of yelling and everything and very like, <laughs> high pitch noises and everything and a lot of laughing. It's just so much fun to record. I, I still remember from the very first season when I, with the pain peppers, I had to like scream super loud for that. It was, it was a lot of fun, some great memories. So now over to Bill Farmer. And well, um, <clears throat> Pop Pop of course gets to do a lot of screaming too. Like, Dang it, Sprig! You know oh, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that call back, and that gets me into the voice right there. All I have to do is do that or say what? You know, <laughs> um, that gets me into the uh, the feeling of Hop Pop. And as a result of the show, uh, my son, his wife, when I babysit their dog, they always, they now call me Hop Pop. That's totally Aww. it. So uh, I have become Hop Pop. That's <laughs> so full awesome. circle. <laughs> it is. There's these That's human emotions. <laughs> and finally, over to Matt. So I sort of like farmed this question out to the team uh, because, like, I liked it so much, and everybody has like a favorite kind of like running gag or kind of thing. Because, like, when you make three seasons of a show, like, inevitably, just like you get a little addicted to repetition. Like, whether it's you, you just kind of want these lines to come back. You kind of want these moments to kind of like echo one another. It's just sort of fun for us. Um, so let me let me go through here and, and list some of them. Um, Loggle, anytime Loggle said like I do, I do. Like <laughs> that's a, a huge favorite of ours. Um, uh, there's there's something about characters yelling like one time. It happened one time, and it's always about like something like absolutely crazy. Like I think when in the dinner when like you know Sprig is is. Or, and Polly are yelling at Sasha. They're like, she tried to kill us, you know, and, and, and all this. And Sasha was like, I tried to kill you one time. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a big deal. I love that. I think that comes back um, a few times. Uh, anytime Marcy's clumsy, uh, super enduring, uh, super awesome. Um, Yunin, uh, General Yunin, like anytime she starts the rant, like we love that because it's yeah. like, Every time it starts, we're like, oh, God, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, here we go. Um, and, of course, Zara does, like, such an amazing job, like, uh, belting it out. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line that I somehow came back a few times of characters yelling, not the baby. And, like, for some, for, yeah, not the baby. And, like, I don't, I think, I, I'm trying to remember, I don't think that was in the script. I, I think a board artist uh, named um, Aaron came up with that. And we just loved, like, bringing it back. And, and actually, in the end credits, which actually samples some of your voices uh, for season three, that kind of like um, uh, EDM kind of uh, mashup, you can hear uh, someone saying, not the baby, like in there too. Cause the we entire were like, oh, we... Yeah, well, it's, it's, very, it's like layered in there, but like, yeah, that was, that was one of our favorites too. Oh, and lastly, anytime I guess Hop Hop's clothes like burst off, like it happens like a few <laughs> yeah, times. It, it, like, I, yeah. It's weirdly like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm nude. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I noticed that he's got little chest hairs. Yeah. <laughs> and that, so I, part of my job is I get asked weird questions at work. And like, so one of them was like in Sprig versus Hop Hop, he like tears his shirt off and there's a close up. And like the artist is just like, so chest hair, no chest hair. And I was like, uh, a little, like a little chest hair. And they were like, 
nipples and i was like "Ooh, that's weird because they're like yeah, that'd be straight. they're not mammals right but it looks like weird without them i'm pretty sure we didn't do them but it you know anyway that's that was my life <laughs> I gotta say, not the baby is the funniest <coughs> thing in the entire universe to me. That song I is love just that. a not baby song to me. I, I just, love not the baby. Yeah. Uh, on on the note of Lago, real quick, uh, was how far back did you know he was going to get ripped? Because back in the first season, I remember he carved himself ripped. Yeah, that's and that, was that always the plan, or did it just someone bring it up later? Like, oh, here's a great idea. Um, it's it's like a little bit of both because like. We loved this idea of this little carpenter dreaming of like, that's the real me, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and, and I think that getting to pay that off in the finale arc was like really satisfying for everyone. So I think it's, it's, it's like that desire was seeded and then we just had to execute it, which is like, of course, of course this guy's got to get swole. You know what I mean? Like it would be a disservice to him if he, if he didn't. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go over to Haley with the next question, but real quick, I just want to thank all the super chats we're getting. Super Moose Bros, Piemite, Z1 Puncher, Matsuya Rific, Stranger Danger, Peridot Lover. Thank you so much for the super chats and your support for us and the show. Uh, a lot of questions in there, most of them super lore heavy. If you do have questions, try and keep them about the experiences behind the show so we can try and work them in. Now over to Haley with the next question. Yeah, so... Uh, unlike a lot of shows, Amphibia got to have not just a climax to its story, but also a nice flash forward where we see the fates of these characters. So uh, first question is for the cast. How did you feel about the ending for your character? And if you could add more, one more detail to it, what would it be? So uh, yeah, let's start with Bill. Well, I hadn't thought about, um, uh, well, well, it'd be nice to see, um, I guess, uh, 10 years in the future, I love that, first of all. I think I mentioned that before. That was a great ending for the show. Um, did we do a, yeah, well, we did have a, kind of a, a peek into the future with the, the group in Wartwood. And so uh, I, Hop Pop wound up with Sylvia. I was happy to see that. So that was nice. Um, and um, Polly looks very interesting as a, much more grown up frog. I was wondering how she would look when she got older. Um, you know, Sprig's hair grew out a little bit. That was nice. Uh, so I just like Justin. <laughs> just like Justin. <laughs> True. Um, but other than that, gosh, I don't know. Um, you know, without revisiting so many episodes, I can't think of anything right offhand, which might be a, a good thing to add. That's okay. Yeah. There's a lot uh, to think about there because he's been so many episodes and such. So yeah, let's go over to uh, Amanda. I love adult Polly. She's so cute. And I love how her face <laughs> is still the same. Like she didn't get like yeah. the frog, like face, like, like you could still tell it's her, you know, uh, she's still got the little round head. And <laughs> um, I'd love to see her build things. Cause like the way that I saw her build Frobo was so cool. And like, I'm kind of curious, like what would she build in Amphibia? So that was kind yeah. of cool. And now over to Lila. Well, I think the last scene I recorded of Mrs. Croker is just her like exclaiming something and dancing around. Yeah. <laughs> and she, goes like, oh boy. She gets like a, a potion and then like smashes it and like starts like break dancing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So that was awesome. Um, I guess, you know, if I could like have more croaker closure, as it were, maybe I'd want to see, you know, uh, what she does with her dairy business or if she maybe uh, finds a new uh, beau, somebody in her love life. You oh know, my. Something like that. Yeah, so oh my, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And finally over to Justin. Yeah, I mean, wow, I, I was so shocked whenever I saw how Sprig looked. I was like, no way, because Matt was right. Like, it, my hair, like, totally grew out and, and everything, and it was, like, it was so crazy. And um, I think if I had to see something, like, I, I'd probably want to see, like, maybe just, like, things he's collected, um, maybe, like, another blue moon shell or something like that, I don't know, over the um, – the years that he's just been without Anne uh, in Amphibia. So I think something like that would be really cool. But I was just so shocked to see Polly and Sprague together. I, I just love that. Yeah. I take a screenshot. It's definitely going to be like a screensaver on my phone. So. Aww. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah. And so the next question is for Matt. 
So what was your thought process behind the ending for the girls? And looking back, is there anything that you would have added or changed? For the, like, the, like, in the in the 10 years later bit, like, the ending ending, right? Like, the mm-hmm. conclusion. Mm-hmm. Um, so the thought process there was that, you know, a lot of this was based on my personal experiences with friendship and this kind of beautiful idea that, you know, you drift apart and you grow independently. And then over time, it's like magic. You, you'll find each other again and reconnect. And after having grown independently, you've brought these new experiences uh, together. For me, like I had these incredible friendships when I was young and we drifted apart and, you know, I was so amazed to reconnect with them and to find that like, I just, I still loved them. You know what I mean? Like it, it was, they were sort of part of me. And I think that for the ending with the girls, it was really important for me to show that, you know, in your life, these big changes will happen and that's okay. You'll be apart from these people who are so important to you, but they'll always sort of be with you as well in a way, like they'll always be part of you. And for me, it was it was very important to kind of showcase that, uh, especially because this show has always been about sort of the gro- the girls being separated, growing as people, and then coming back together. Like even at the very beginning in Amphibia, um, kind of the best thing that's ever happened for them was to be separated. You know what I mean? Where it's like Anne gets dropped with frogs, Sasha gets dropped with the toads, Marcy gets dropped with the newts, and for almost the first time in their lives they're able to grow like on their own um, uh, w- without being kind of like defined by one another. And it's a kind of beautiful thing. And I think it's such a testament to their bond that they find each other again. And really that's what my intention was, is that, you know, if you, if you do drift apart, that's okay. And that the kind of currents of life and love will end up bringing you back together again. Thank you so much for giving us such a in-depth answer, especially after the finale. I know a lot of people just, uh, they want to know those sorts of things. For our next question, uh, this one is actually submitted by, <clears throat> this one was actually submitted by Andrew from Streamly, who helps put together these events, uh, who, who puts together these events. Uh, for All In, was there any debate on which K-pop man or song to pick? <laughs> Um, uh, not, not so much debate, but you know, there was this question of like, are we really going to get like a licensed song? Because like, that's very expensive and, and there's, there's so many logistical problems. And for, a, for a long time, we, we were determined to write our own. And I think we were all just very nervous about that. Like, uh, the music team, me kind of having to write this fake K-pop song, like, you know, and obviously it would have been in Korean and I just, I had so many issues with that and it feeling real and it in it reading we use that word a lot like reading you know what i mean where it's like oh this is a pre-existing pop song in this universe but it's fake it's not a real song we wrote it for the episode but in this universe this is like a banger of a song that like lit up the charts or whatever it's like that's a lot to kind of like sink in 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 such a short moment so for me i believe the only way that scene would work you know you're talking like when the music kicks in and she's like kicking ass and like yeah, I, I really felt like the only way that scene would work was with an actual song because your brain would automatically recognize it as like an existing piece of music and you would understand. Um, and in as far as like which song, I think the editor, um, Yuna, brilliant editor, she had already kind of slugged in uh, Blackpink. Uh, Blackpink was very popular, I think, when we were doing the animatic. And Blackpink is quite special because one of the lead singers, the the lead rapper is, is Thai. Uh, her name is Lisa. Um, and she's like a Thai icon. Like, I mean, she broke into this giant industry um, by sheer force of talent. Like she auditioned and she, she just got in. And I think it's really special that like Lisa, uh, her voice is in the show. Well, now we're going to kick that question over to the voice actors and give them a chance to feel like a director for a moment and ask uh, if there was a any song, unlimited budget, whatever song you could have playing for a climactic moment for your character, K-pop or any genre, which one would you choose and why? And I think we should maybe start with Justin. 
Okay. Um, just off the top of my head, maybe like uh, Thunderstruck or something during like the, the final battle scene. That would be really sick. But yeah, I I guess that would have to be it. <laughs> what about Amanda Layton? I at the Tiger is the only song that's coming to my head right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. I can see that for Polly. That's <laughs> yeah. I'll go with that uh, one. Bill. Gosh, uh, it'd have to be an oldie. Uh, so it'd probably be something like Home on the Range or something like that. One of those old classics. He'd sing that because he always pines for the old days for his you know, stability and that sort of thing. So that, that, that work. I yeah. love that in hop hop's darkest moment, a song <laughs> starts to play. <laughs> Home on the range bursting from the speakers. I love it. Maybe it's like an EDM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's a modernization. Hop hop yeah. dance too. Uh, Home on finally... the range by Avicii. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, uh, Lila. <laughs> For sheer comedic effect, just because of the way that she sounds when she sings, and also because she had a very sassy past, Chandelier by Sia. <laughs> ah, well, no swing. <laughs> keep going, keep going. And her voice like cracks. Well, the chandelier. <laughs> Blows up all the heads of the robots. Yeah, just, just you know, see I her know, do yeah. it like. Yeah. Why was it and literally that? have her do it and just like Amazing. and she's wearing some crazy like leotard or something with sequins. I, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I got a <laughs> little disco ball. <laughs> you thought of this. Need a moment here. Deep cut. <laughs> okay. okay, I just want to thank uh, more super chats coming in. Lombax Elite, Sky Sky Tubby. Luke Jones, Junjo Guy, uh, Super Moose Bros again. Thank you so much for the support. And over to Haley with another question. I'm going to pop off for a moment for <laughs> <laughs> need some need some time. Um, yeah. So the series ended with Ivy revealing that there was another <clears throat> continent on the world of Amphibia for her and Sprig to explore. So uh, for you, Matt, is this set up for a future spinoff material such as comics or another show? Is there a reason the Newts never found it? Um, I mean, yes and no. It's it's to give the sensation that the adventure is continuing for Sprig and his friends. You know what I mean? It's to, it's that kind of like they're running off into the sunset feeling where it's like this is not the end for them. You know what I mean? It's there. There's so much more adventure for this uh, cast of characters. Um, and in as far as like why like it's undiscovered, I have like such a stupid head cannony like explanation that and this is it. Hear me out. Maybe it's crazy. Maybe something to do with the moon's absence has changed the like geography of like amphibia and like maybe this thing has like risen up you know what i mean like i think there's like something very cool to explore there um but that's that's all i can think of honestly like a little <clears throat> amphibious atlantis rising back up yeah, yeah exactly right uh, that'd be awesome yeah okay now to the cast what future stories would you like to see your character get into whether in uh in, in amphibia uh whether amphibia, amphibian on Earth, the new continent, or another dimension. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Did you mean like, Deepka, did you mean like in amphibia or like being an amphibian on Earth? I just meant like if you could see any future story with your character, whether it's yeah. about this continent, just a day in the life, you know, it, what would above. you like to just see more of your character doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, Amanda, let's start with you. I think it would be really cool to see Polly and Sprig and Ivy kind of go off on their own like own adventures and stuff and like um I, I said earlier like Polly can like now build things and they could be like you know discovering things Indiana Jones style but also with like robots and stuff and like <laughs> discover new continents and worlds that would be pretty cool mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome uh Lila is there anything you have thought of um well, I like the idea of Mrs. Croker having an alter ego of like a detective or something like that. She's solving crimes in like a film noir style, <laughs> something like that. So that's the only thing I could think of off the top of my head. Now you always got good stuff <laughs> for your character. Can we or please she get leads, like a Mrs. Or she Croker like a podcast. karate dojo. That's the other yeah. thing. So she already has those cool moves. Maybe she's like a secret sensei or something. You get to see like the whole other side of her life that nobody else gets to see. <laughs> over to bill i think hop pop um 
just judging from the ending scene where he's with Sylvia, okay, they get together. They would probably open up a, a B and B to bring in wayward frogs. I new love it. Yes. <laughs> That's they, so they, sweet. They, with a vegetable and fruit stand, right? In the back, there would have to be a little theater so Hop Cop Hop Pop could act. A theater. And, uh, there'd be a captive audience that'd probably be the pay for staying at the B and B. And uh, it'd be a nice arc because I always, uh, when I first saw the character and he had the book, oh, so you're a failed actor. I was saying, oh, I wonder what they're going to do with this. And uh, so here's the arc. Now he gets to act whenever he wants to. He's got a B and B because he's learned through his love of Anne that he was originally you know, against her. Okay, we'll take her in. But, you know, uh, now he loves it. That is a so he so loves hard. strangers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He likes the adventure. Yeah, that's perfect. And finally to Justin. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with Amanda. I think something like that, exploring that new continent would be really, really awesome. Um, and I, I've been getting a lot of messages from fans and everything talk about that. So, um, but I, I think it'd be really cool. There, there's a lot of adventures that they could have there and uh, possibly maybe some cutscenes ex explaining other stuff about like their parents and everything but yeah i mean <clears throat> all of that would be awesome <laughs> so some of you have been on here before and we usually ask what's your favorite moments in the show and one thing you always say is you know can't talk about things that haven't happened yet uh yeah. so now we finally have the chance what is your favorite moment in the show and since climactic answers are very easy in addition to any climactic answers you have, uh, filler episodes that you particularly loved, I'm sure fans would love to hear about. Why don't we start with Matt himself and work our way through the cast from there? Yeah, I mean, I, like, all in and the hardest thing, I'm so proud of these episodes. They're like a roller coaster, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Like, and I mean, start with beginning of the end and, like, watch all three of them together. And, like, you know, this isn't for fans to think about this is like for me to think about but like I'm so proud of like what this team has managed to accomplish um this is this was a very small show that was uh greenlit as an 11 minute episodic comedy and that brings limitations do you know what I mean it brings expectations and it brings like a budget like and 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 so what I'm saying is when I watch those episodes it brings a tear to my eye because like they're only possible because of the amazing work that the team has put into them you know what i mean like it's not the stuff you just don't like press a button and it gets done like we like killed ourselves making this show because we loved the characters and we loved the story and i hope that like you all feel that when you watch it when you watch like the girls using their calamity powers for the first time together it's like this parade you know what i mean like it's this celebration of what the show is and i hope that you know, again, I'm, I'm just so grateful for the team. Uh, and as far as like smaller episodes, I am so glad you asked because there's so many episodes that are like just my favorites. I I love that episode where Pop-Pop is like helicopter parenting Sprig into being like a violin star. I, I uh, fiddle me this. It's just, it's so personal to me. And like, I, I love that part. Like he, he plays that banger of a song and then like the bat comes and it, it grabs him and it's just it's absolutely hilarious but it's also so sweet at the end when like hop hop's like i was just like trying to give you like a better life you know what i mean like i i adore that episode um i also really like uh <laughs> uh cat sitting um because of that ending with mr Brunchoy when he's like you guys will like never owe us a thing and like i mean really anything with parents makes me weepy because like you know what i mean like I put so much of myself in those characters. Um, so yeah, th those are two highlights for me. I, I love those episodes. Now over to Amanda. Oh man. Um, I love the episode where, uh, probably because it was just so much fun for me and I've never been able to do this, but I loved being uh, where, where Polly spoke Thai. I can't oh. speak Thai, but I had so much help on it and it was so much fun like just the process of, of you know, recording it, um, it was a blast. And then going back and watching that episode, um, I love the part where like the mom was getting all like, like the, um, like the plates and like the Tupperwares back, like how everybody like pitched in and helped when, um, when Anne was gone. And I thought that that was like a really, really sweet moment. Tear. <laughs> Amanda, Amanda, every time I show that scene to someone who's Thai speaking, they're like, that's all in. 
Oh, really? Oh, that yeah, means yeah, so yeah. much because you know I wanted to do such a good job, and I'm like, oh, I just hope I did like <laughs> like adequate, you know? What so, I mean? <laughs> oh my God, guys, we we because of the time difference too. Amanda was so great, called in at some weird time, and and this uh, our translator slash localizer, she kind of walked Amanda through it, and it was like the most difficult line of dialogue, like in another language you can you can imagine. It, the line is like. No, but I did binge all of Mrs. Boonjoy's romantic comedy collection or something. And it's just like, yeah. whoa, that's hard to say in English. Oh. So <laughs> yeah. it was like a big like paragraph. Oh, I was like, can God. we do like like word by word by word? <laughs> like <laughs> we broke yeah. it down. And so Ty's much. tonal. So if if you had been like even a little bit off, you would have said something completely different. Yeah, it was hard. It was very it was difficult, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> now over to Justin. Yeah, I mean, wow. Uh, there's so many amazing scenes. I, I guess probably my favorite scene uh, acting was definitely whenever Sprig uh, talked about his parents and uh, kind of opened up with Anne. I think that was really, really great. And the, there was kind of like a, a closer bond and connection there. Um, but one of, I think one of the most fun episodes to record in recent times was um, Spider, the Spider Sprig. <laughs> that was that was so much fun i i loved like watching it afterwards and seeing his like whole costume design and everything um but yeah that was a lot of, a lot of fun so yeah over to bill oh gosh anytime you can stretch the character emotionally it's always a lot of fun so uh and i love horror movies so one of my favorites from the first uh, season was uh, children of the spore i love that one um i loved it whenever hop pop would become vulnerable and admit his mistakes, like in the Zappapede one where he's been watching the, uh, uh, um, what was the? Uh, um, Sus Suspicion gosh. Island, yeah. Um, and he's been, and he drained her mute, her video box or whatever. Um, and when he uh, was emotional talking about his uh, misgivings about, you know, when uh, Sprig and Polly's parents died with the herons, that was a fun one to do. Because uh, it's so emotional and you get to stretch the character a little bit. We did the one where he was the detective, the kind of black and white old uh, Bogart kind of detective, Sam Spade kind of a detective thing. Uh, that was fun. Anytime you get to take your character out of its normal, normal reins uh, or boundaries uh, is always a lot of fun. <clears throat> All right. I'm not sure where Haley jumped off to, so I'll take over from here. Uh, the series had a few episodes cut from what we understand due to COVID, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, could you possibly tell us what plot lines we may have seen if those had not been removed? We start with Matt. Oh, um, or were we mistaken about that? I heard there was like a cut. Wait, did you didn't ask Lila? Oh, oh did yeah, we Lila. No. No worries, it's no, okay. Talk, talk to Lila first, and I'll think about yes, that. Yes, please. Yeah. Sorry, I'm so sorry. No, it's all um, good. It's all good. So um, I think my favorite scene uh, that I got to be a part of um, is cracking Mrs. Croker, just for obvious reasons, because we get to have this epic uh, fight scene uh, with Jonah, uh, who's also um, one of uh, one of the voices of um, Bugs Bunny in the Wabbit Show, which was really uh, awesome to be a part of. Even though we weren't in the same booth together, it was it was just like it was like it felt like cartoon history in a sort of weird way. Um, and uh, there's so many moments in the show that I loved. Uh, anytime that Sprig and Polly tried to take responsibility for things that they shouldn't have been taking responsibility for, like when they're just driving off course uh, while Hop Hop's sleeping. <laughs> just all sorts of horrible shenanigans <laughs> ensue. That was one of my absolute favorites. And there's just so many little gems uh, in the show where I just busted out laughing, especially yeah. when, when Bill was talking about the, so you're a failed actor. <laughs> like, <laughs> those little nuggets like just got me every time. I was like, they put it in there. So I'm just giggling throughout the whole show. There's so many. You're, also, you're... I also secretly like when um, Polly has to try to be a uh, try uh, when Anne tries to show her girly things and she's just not having it at all. She just wants to smash things and be her <laughs> aggro her, her aggro <laughs> self, which I just love so much. <laughs> just love. I have to say, real quick, one of the most surprising lines, pretty much in all of cartoon history, was from your episode where your your secret agent backstory thing came out. Uh, the put your clothes on pervert, just seeing that. <laughs> I was like, what? How did they do that? I, 
I don't remember like why that was allowed. I, you know, there was um uh in the Night Driver episode with like the hitchhiker, like like Polly used to take a swing at him and yell like, "Take this, you pervert!" or something. Yeah, and, I remember. And they were like, "Dad, you can't do that." And I was like, <laughs> "Have you seen that other episode? You know what I mean? Like we, we told yeah. you already, already yeah. said this, but it's you know it was a new person and just anyway." Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that line just like I was like wow okay this show is it wins <laughs> <laughs> then uh, over to Matt with our previous question which was uh, we were told that some episodes may have been cut towards the end we were wondering if we can get some insight into that and what kind of plots yeah we yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah 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 um no 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 there there weren't multiple episodes cut so really the the COVID uh cut was one half hour so if you if you look at the runtime of the show it adds up to about, you know, 19 and a half hours and then some. Um, and the order was for 20. But in COVID, I was told that if you give one episode back to the studio, it will really help, like, everyone get through kind of like this time. So we did. And that one episode was actually slated to be a mandated holiday episode. So it was going to be another Halloween special. Um, so there was no, there, there wasn't going to be any continuity in it. You know what I mean? Right. It was, you, it, was good. it was gonna be a banger though. <laughs> can you tell us a bit about that? <laughs> oh my god. I mean, my one of my biggest regrets on the show is like never getting to do any stop motion. I love stop motion. I love it. You know what I mean? So like that was like my big dream was to do some kind of crazy stop motion, like Halloween. You you know what I mean? Like that would have yeah. been so beautiful and to see the characters in like in clay dimensions and ah uh, that. That would have been, it would have cost an arm and a leg though. So maybe my, my thinking was in the wrong. I, it's so funny. There was like another instance where I was like, Ooh, could we get a little stop motion in this episode? Wouldn't that be great? Like maybe it was very early days, like stakeout when they drink the drinks and they like hallucinate or whatever. And I remember we were going over the accounting and they're like, yes, you can afford, like they like check their notes, half a second of stop motion. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, <Wow>. like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that in mind, some questions for the cast would be uh, if there was a, you know, a last minute episode you could have worked in right with the con. This one might be a little bit more of an intense question. So no problem if you can't find an answer. But if you could have inserted just one more little episode for your character right, you know, before the finale, what would it have been about? What would you have done? What would your character do? Mm. We start with Amanda. Now I really want that Halloween stop motion one. I know. <laughs> I'm like you picturing you it about. in my what head. What a great half second like, that would be. <laughs> I would love to just see all of our characters in like clay form, just yes. like I know. And, cool. and how That'd cool would Amphibia look? Like I know. Like, Can we crowdfund this? Like. <laughs> 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 It would have been just the same set pasted over and over again, though, Amanda. You know what I mean? Because, like, I'm sure we could afford, like... <laughs> uh, do you still have an episode of that, or is that just where we're at? Just a Halloween episode? Just another Halloween episode. <laughs> Perfect. All right, over to Justin. And you can't say Halloween episode. Uh, oh, ooh, poor Justin. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think something with... with I mean, uh, now that I, I've heard that, I think something with like claymation would have been so cool. Like, I, I feel like it definitely could have fit in with um, with that scene whenever they are all hallucinating and everything. Um, <laughs> that would have been really cool to see. But uh, I mean, that that scene alone was so amazing and so fun to record. I remember. So uh, yeah, but something like that would have been really, really cool. I think to see. Over to Bill. Well, I love the episode. Uh, I'd like to find out more about Hot Pop's past. Like, yeah. who was his wife? What was the lineage? What, you know, more in depth on that kind of thing. I love the uh, Halloween episode where, you know, Hot Pop, we saw him younger, uh, carting around, you know, the, the death of the Grim Reaper. And uh, yeah, m more from that era, maybe uh, I'd like to find out, you know, maybe when he was young and he, he was with his parents. What was that like? There could be a whole different thing. There's an uh, infinite number of things that would be fun to do. But I'd just like to learn, okay, where did this guy come from? What's, you know, really, what's his past? Thank you. And finally, over to Lila. Same thing. I want to know more about Mrs. Croker and her, you know, her real love life and all the shenanigans she got into when she was younger. Just, you know, and what would she sound like when she was younger? And just, <laughs> Same. Yeah, same. Yeah. Same voice. Yes. 
Even as a baby. Hello. <laughs> yeah, go, go. And she's canonically canonically hot croaker too. You know, yes, and, yes. Yeah, so. hot croaker. I want a hot croaker episode. <laughs> where you like go back in time and you get to yeah. see her. And you just so. like, oh hello, honey. How's it going? <laughs> like just see her flirting and stuff. Like, oh. Like her first middle school dance. Like something like <laughs> something something just so like uh relatable that you could just yeah. I want this so bad. Uh, <clears throat> real quick, I want to give a special thanks to uh, the more super chats from Retro HDs, Atomic Optimus, Sleepy Me Q, Rob, and Ashley Silver. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in, you can still get an autograph print from Matt himself, the cast, or even a combination thereof. They have group signed posters. I think some of them might still be there. Uh, some are sold out, but this is probably our last amphibious stream, all things considered. So if you really want one, this is your chance. Uh, and over to Haley with the next question. Yeah, so I think this is our last question before we get to some audience questions, right? So uh, yeah, make sure to put them down. This is your chance. Um, yeah, so for everyone, what future projects should we expect from you and what other shows or media can we find you on in the meantime, if there's anything you can talk about? Yeah, so I'm gonna start off with the cast this time. So um, for Justin. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a few things coming out that I can't talk about. Um, some ADR stuff and everything. Uh, but yeah, I just plan on continuing to do stuff in, in cartoons and animation and, uh, you know, doing more voiceover for, you know, kid to teenage shows. They're, those are always my favorites. So, uh, yeah, plan on continuing that through college. So, <laughs> Awesome. And Lila? Sorry, I was looking on my IMDb to see what I could talk about. <laughs> wow, a little cheat, cheat sheet there. Cheat sheet. I was like, what can I... I mean, a lot of things like uh, that that I uh, are still in production, uh, a lot of games and things like that, and a couple cartoons, but things that are currently uh, out, um, there's a video game, Black Desert, Eternal Winter. You can catch me as a couple of voices in that. Chocobo, uh, which is this new very... Um, kind of fighting game um and uh i was in a recent episode of star trek prodigy on nickelodeon as ankle restraint minor one and minors <laughs> <laughs> other than that it's all nda <laughs> fair fair okay now over to you bill well um i'm still working as goofy and pluto on a couple of uh series that are coming out as well as all the stuff that's on disney plus i have a show called it's a dog's life with bill farmer it's where i got to produce and actually be the host of finding about real working dogs around the country and i'm very proud of that and i'm a big dog person so i yeah, animated and real and so that's there and all the goofy stuff that's out there and you know you never know it just keeps coming awesome and amanda I am recording a show, uh, another animated show. I'm not quite sure if I'm allowed to talk about it yet, so I'm just not going to. <laughs> um, and then I also just finished my very last episode of This Is Us. So that's been quite a journey as well. And I think we have like one more episode left and then that's, that's the end. And finally, if there's anything you can talk about, Matt, uh, let us know. Yeah, I mean, I want to do something different, you know what I mean, for my next project. Like, and I want it to be bigger and like grander. I had so much fun working on our kind of climax episodes that, like, man, I'd love to make a movie or a limited series. That would be my dream. You know, I'd love to do something even more anime infused too. <clears throat> like, I, I, I love that stuff, and I, I really feel like the medium. Really, I mean, like, Arcane kind of like blew my mind in terms of like what you could accomplish. Um, I know that, like, you know, obviously, uh, Riot Games bankrolled a lot of that show and that's why you know it's so beautiful but i i do think that there is a way to work within limitations and as long as like that's the spirit of your project like you want to push animation you want to see stories that like are for you know kids families and also adults in the medium um i think you can do it so i'm gonna make that my goal and, and see what i can do Thank you so much. Uh, so we're going to start taking some comment questions. I'm seeing some pop up while we're collecting them. I would like to ask about the very many references since you brought up anime in particular, also some Song of the Hedgehog ones. Can you break down some of the references, especially in the finale? 
Yeah, yeah. So like, was there a little Majora's Mask? Oh my God! Yeah, there's so many references, and you know, it's 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 a funny thing because like some of them I wouldn't call references so much as like imagery that touched us, like when when we were kids, or you know what I mean, like the idea of this giant horrifying moon like coming towards the planet was obviously seeded in Majora's Mask for like many of us, you know what I mean? But like, it's not. I wouldn't say it's a reference, you know what I mean? It's it's more just like, oh, we were inspired by it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's there's a number of things, like, and lots of people have already pointed them out, but uh, the insect space robot battle is, like, directly because of, like, Gunbuster. I, I don't know if you've ever seen Gunbuster, but there's this incredible sequence where they're fighting these, like, space aliens, and and they're just insects, and it's, the, the imagery is unmistakable. Um, so if you if you look it up, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's, I can see how they drew inspiration from that. Um, Magic Knight Rare for the three girls and their powered up forms, their mm-hmm. big, you know, shoulder pads <clears throat> and their armor and like they're beautiful and they're fabulous. And like that, that definitely stuck with me, um, that imagery from Ray Earth. Um, but uh, a deeper cut is that uh, that part where they're all pushing the moon and Andreas's robots, you know, come to help. And Andreas coming through in the clutch somehow to kind of like finally try to turn things around from them is really like inspired by uh, this Gundam movie called Char's Counterattack, where like you've got these two factions who are like at each other's throats for the entire movie, but they kind of put everything aside to kind of like try to help the earth in like the last moments of the conflict. And that always really touched me to see the bad guys and the good guys like kind of putting their differences aside for like the greater good sort of like in this, in one moment, like just for this moment, like, we're on the same side and it's like very gratifying. So we were definitely after that feeling. Oh, awesome. Sorry. I just got, uh, real quick. One thing I want to know is more Sonic references. I seem to know Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. Was that intentional or is that all? I mean, it's, uh, oh, I guess like when they're like powering up and stuff, that feels like a hundred percent like Sonic Adventure 2. And like, obviously there's a lot of imagery in Sonic Adventure 2 that also was inspired by these movies. You know what I mean? Like they're all kind of coming from the same uh, cultural zeitgeist. Like, you know, the idea that uh, a space colony or a moon or something is plummeting towards earth is actually something that's like been baked in anime for like a long time. So Sonic Adventure 2 actually is getting hella anime, like at the end of its story when, you know, the bio lizard is taking control of the satellite and he's going to smash it into earth. I mean, there's no way those guys hadn't seen some of those Gundam seasons where that's like always the plot. Gundam is always about the bad guys trying to drop something on Earth. They're like always trying to do it. It's like the whole thing. <laughs> well, I, think I'm, I didn't know about that myself. I'm sure a lot of people didn't either. So just knowing the, you know, the bigger canon behind these anime inspirations that, you know, people are all drawing from, it's great to hear. Uh, and now over to Haley with some questions from the audience. Yeah. Oh, uh, so yeah, we have a bunch of super chat ones. I'm not sure which ones are a ton of percent good. Uh, although, um, thank you so much, like Z One Puncher, for this uh, huge super chat. I guess are you able to answer this, Matt? Uh, how fast <laughs> are the Frobo lasers? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so th- these are the kinds of questions that I was I was sort of afraid of because like I'm not a physicist. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. there I don't have some numbers like for you guys like in that sense. Like I mean, if you can you throw it back up and we can like like let's try like let's look at this thing. Yeah, one, one second. Uh, oh, I'll do I, my I'll do my damnedest. I think I started. I'm prefacing prefacing this by saying I'm not a physicist. You know what I mean? Like if I get some of this stuff wrong, please forgive me. I can I can reread it. Um, hi, Mr. Bra- uh, Brawley. How fast are Frobo lasers? Faster than lightning? Near light speed? As fast as light? I feel like it's one of those things that like they're as fast as we need them to be for the scene. So if it's like a dramatic <laughs> scene where like Frobo's shooting a laser at someone and like it's about to hit someone, we would definitely like slow down time a little bit to like give the impression. It's really about story need uh, from my point of view, you know what I mean? So I I think in reality, if it's a laser, it would be like almost immediate, you know what I mean? But that's no fun. So anyway. <clears throat> All right, so it looks like we're gonna round it out here. Uh, we're going to, uh, before we take off, though, is there any last things any of you would like to, you know, final messages for the fans on the show and your time on it? Why don't we start with uh, Amanda? 
Um, I just want to thank everybody for watching. <laughs> uh, we all loved working on the show. I know that uh, it will always have a very, very special place in my heart. And I'm just so thankful to have been able to work with everybody on this show. And um, I love it. And so I'm just so thankful that people love it too. <laughs> And over to Justin. Yeah, totally. What Amanda said, thank you so much, everyone, for watching and all the love and support. I mean, I, I can't tell you guys how many, um, you know, pictures I've had sent to me of drawings that people have made of, of Sprig and Polly and, and Hot Pop and all the characters and uh, all the amazing comments and, and notes from people. Just uh, they, they always make my day. And um, I'm just really proud to have worked on such an amazing show like this. And uh, I'm Thankful for all the fans, so thanks, guys. And over to Bill. Well, obviously, uh, thanks to everybody out there for all the support and the love that people have given this series. It's a tremendous series. And, uh, you know, these characters become like family members. They become like children almost. Uh, you know, they're like, uh, you like doing Goofy more or Hot Pup? You can't answer a thing like that because they're two different entities. They're all in the family, and I loved it dearly, and it's definitely a high point of uh, my career. One of the uh, most exciting you know, series that I've ever been on. It really was. The stories were great. The, the, the characters were great. Um, uh, the artwork was great. There's nothing that I have to say against this series uh, other than you know i wish we'd had a fourth season <laughs> and over to lila well i mean you guys took the words right out of my mouth everything that i, <clears throat> that I could possibly say the the show uh it has felt like being part of a family uh the writing uh the the story arcs everything is just you know, this was my first Disney show. So to get this kind of, and it really did give me as corny as it sounds, this Disney magic. Like I got <laughs> that feeling I got. Like, so I have full of warm fuzzies. I'm so grateful uh, to uh, to everybody who's watched this show and supported uh, everybody in it because um, it is, it, it does feel like the end of a of a beautiful play you know and saying goodbye to all your castmates and it's just that bittersweet you know feeling where you just hope it continues somehow in the future you know thank you and we're gonna move over to matt <clears throat> but on the uh bill brought up the pot you know the idea of season four so perhaps now would be a good time to ask matt uh what ideas you would have if the show especially you know you you, you wrote it to end at season three but if suddenly you woke up tomorrow and they're like season four or perhaps a movie uh, what would you, what, how would you go about that? Um, great question. Thank you. Um, I, I think about a movie a lot and I think about the kinds of things that I would want to see and sort of like where the story is and what we haven't done. And I'll just tell you right now, the movie would be a time travel movie. And the reason being is that I want to see Leaf and Barrel interact with our modern day characters. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like it would be the best way to kind of create a satisfying new story. Uh, even though we have this time skip, even though we have, you know, something that feels very satisfying and conclusive, it would be a great way to, to give payoffs to something you didn't even know you wanted. Like, you know, again, the planters meeting their first descendant or barrel getting more screen time or like uh, that stuff excites me. So if that's something you want to see, I mean, I'll never say, Never. I think that if you make enough noise and that's interesting, it can happen. I think movies, movies are a little bit different and special because it's not the continuation of like this three season arc. So that would be kind of the perfect way to get to see these characters again on the screen, I think. It's one of the top shows on Disney Plus. So if Disney's smart, they'll use that as a way to just transfer more Amphibia fans right over there. Yeah. That'd be uh, great. Animation's so slow, though. You know, it takes yeah. so long. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, for now, though, if you guys do want that, you know, make some noise online. And finally, Matt, if you want to give us your final thoughts on the show before we sign out, anything you want to say oh, to fans? Oh, God. Um, I guess, you know, for me, this episode was so emotional because Anne saying goodbye to the planters and Amphibia was happening at the exact same time that I was saying goodbye to Anne and the planters and Amphibia. And for me, you know, it's um, one of those things where like, like 
Oh man, it's, this is actually making me emotional. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, and and believes in in the end that she will see them again. She has faith that she will. Um, and you know, Marcy and Sasha have returned to her. Uh, so why not the planters? Um, and in that sense, and in that the vibe of that feeling, I too believe that one day I will be re reunited with this show and this crew. Um, that's all, but I'm so grateful. And um, it was such a marvelous opportunity to tell this story and share it with you. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Well, you just got me to cry a third time. So thank you. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us today, Matt, the cast. Uh, and, you know, last time, too, it's just been great. Like, I can't think of a more special way to spend a Saturday after watching the series finale to such an amazing show. Like, thank you. So thank you all. Thank you all for watching. Uh, last chance for Streamly Prince from the show, quite possibly. Link in the description down below. Uh, and with that, we'll be signing off. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Bye, everybody.